Holla. Nate from the 8020 Drummer, back at you, lesson of the week. So this is my first post-NAM week lesson, and maybe at the end I'll uh, dial it just a little bit on how inspirational that was. I uh, got to hang with a lot of my heroes, so pretty humbling. Anyway, the subject of this week's lesson is my friend Steve Pruitt. Now, Steve and I have been Facebook slash internet friends for a minute, and uh, he's another one of these guys that I notice every few days is posting some kind of absolutely crazy killing clip. So yet another drummer that I'm internet friends with and who hopefully I'll get to hang with in real life pretty soon, who just inspires me constantly. All I have to do is check my Facebook feed and see Steve blowing up my spot and hate myself for about three minutes and then just have this renewed fire to get into the shed. So Steve and I have been talking for a couple months actually about doing a group lesson for you guys. So I'm happy to feature Steve on this lesson. And uh, yeah, let's let Steve give you a little intro. Hello, Nates. Hello, musicians out there and rhythm enthusiasts. This is Steve Pruitt and I'm coming at you from my humble studio here in Seoul, South Korea. I'm very happy and honored to be here, and I would like to thank Nate for inviting me. Today, the subject is a solo that I played on with this trio that I play with, uh, named, uh, her, her name is, the pianist's name is Yongju Song, and the name of the song is Yellow Brick Road. <laughs> So the focus of this lesson, at least for my segment, is actually going to be one of Steve's solos. And this is a solo he took on a track uh, written by a mutual friend of ours, Young Ju Song, and it's called Yellow Brick Road. And the track is 15-4 or 15-8, uh, a bar of 8 followed by a bar of 7. So essentially the groove uh, sounds like this if you play it simply. 3-4... Obviously, the peak experience of the whole tune is the drum solo at the end, which Steve captured a little bit on his Instagram. I saw that. I was like, damn, I want some of that. So I decided to learn it. So here, without further ado, is the solo. Okay, so I'm going to break this solo into its two kind of component parts and play each part of it slowly for you and then kind of dissect what Steve is doing rudimentally. But I chose the two kind of most intense groups of 15 beats from the solo. The solo has parts below, before and after that, but I feel like if you really want to emulate the way Steve deploys rudiments uh, so cleanly and seamlessly, uh, so quickly, and bear in mind, like, he's improvising this. I copied it and had time to practice it. Uh, you, It really would behoove you to study this solo. So the first half of the solo is really a, a study, an etude, if you will, in single strokes. So really slowly, it is three, four. So... I decided that there were some movements in this that were more difficult than others. And this is the 80-20 drummer, so not all of it's created equal. So if you're having trouble playing this, I would recommend starting and playing until you hit a stopping point. And I think one of the first stopping points is... Right, so the first gesture is... So this part was difficult for me, so I would just make an exercise out of it. And then I would add the other part. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. And play, put those together. So three, four.
And finally, speed it up. Three, four. So the next gesture is this. And then the second half is. So that's essentially the same mechanics, except for this part. So again, three, four, three, four, three, four. Whole thing. So I'm going to come back to you in the second half of this lesson to send you out and maybe give you some more thoughts of my own about this. But now to show me where I got this wrong and hopefully to expand it for you, I'd like to introduce my boy from the other side of the planet. Ain't nothing to it but to Pruitt, the Thuria from Korea, Mr. Steve Pruitt. I think one of the main ideas was, um, it's a single stroke idea, it's a 10, it's 10 notes. So you can think of it however you want. So basically it's like one e and a, two e and a, and then two bass drum feet. Okay, and since that's a little bit over the bar line, it's a little tricky. So I would suggest just taking that sticking and don't worry about if it's in 4-4 or whatever. Just, just play around with it, see what you come up with. So we just take some of those ideas and just we use our ears to find the ones that we like. I think uh, one of the I think one of the ones I used on that was on that solo was. Uh, whatever. I don't think it's exact, but. Uh, Close enough for jazz, <laughs> as they say. Okay, so now let's figure out how to make that into a one bar phrase. I think that would mean we play the 10 note cycle three times, and then we would add two hits on the end. So I guess we could just make that. Okay, now the next step in practicing that would be, I, I mean, for me, one measure rest, and then one measure that idea. So one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Um. Okay, and then you can practice moving that around. I highly recommend finding one or two orchestrations that you can work with just for the time being to get comfortable. A lot of times these days, uh, a lot of my students want to play, they want to play as many variations as possible immediately. But then the pattern itself kind of gets lost uh, and the time gets a little weird. So I would recommend to make it solid, just pick a couple. So I guess I'll pick, uh, I'll pick, I'll, I'll play like this. One, two, three. Okay, so that's that's three different ones, but we're just doing the first on the snare, so that's uh, not a big deal. That's that's pretty easy and pretty fun to play. So now maybe we put that in a uh, groove context. Uh, and I know that was that was, the video was jazz, like jazz kind of drum and bass, you know, modern kind of feel. But really, this 
this sort of vocabulary, we can make it work in any setting. So let's let's do the groove uh, groove context. So one, two. Let me do it a little slower. Okay, so that's the first half. And in the second half, Steve deploys a lot of these inverted paradiddles. So before I show you where they are in the solo, let me just show you what that rudiment is. And it, a regular paradiddle is, of course, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. And with an inverted paradiddle, you're simply moving the doubles one sixteenth or one eighth in. So, so it'll be right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. One very common thing you can do with the inverted paradiddle is Dennis Chambers does this, a bunch of people do it. So where Steve does it is in this particular part of the second half. And let me play First of all, the second half for you slowly. So three, four. Okay, so where do we find those inverted paradiddles? Right, there's an inverted paradiddle. So he goes. There's another orchestration, right? Um, and then at the top of the next phrase. So that's another great one. Um, And finally, at the at the end, so singles, four singles, and then an inverted paradiddle. So all together, that sounds like. Now, what's the next step? Well, another idea I played in that solo was uh, inverted paradiddles, okay? Right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, okay? Repeated. So then we can do the same thing as we did before. Let's just, let's keep quarter notes on the hi-hat and let's just play inverted paradiddles on the snare first to get comfortable. Then let's move it around the kit, okay? I'll do a little slower. It's a good one to kind of get your hands warmed up and get
get around the kid a little bit. So that so I use that idea, okay, and I guess the next level up from that is let's do inverted paradiddles for three measures, and then on the fourth measure, do that ten note idea that we were doing. So so I'll uh, I'll play a little slower and I'll use simple orchestration. Okay, so that, that can be a framework from something that you practice. So now we can say, within that, how can we be creative? So now I'm going to improvise with that a little bit. And yeah, I'll just improvise with it. Two, three. That's what I would do with it. I would, I would play it. You know, if I if I heard something I like, I would pull it out. You know, dissect it a little bit, and then plug it in and make my own thing with it. Right. So that being said, I'm going to do it. Maybe maybe a little faster. Two, three, four. So I guess that's it for me. Thanks for watching. If you want to get a hold of me or check out what I'm doing, I'm on Facebook. I have an artist page. It's www.facebook.com slash do it to it music. No spaces or anything. And I'm also on Instagram at Steve Pruitt Music. I'm on Twitter at Joshua Heaven. I have a YouTube channel, Steve Pruitt Music. And I think that's all the social media I can handle. Thanks to Nate again for this opportunity and please stay in touch. All right, so I'm recording this from the past, but I wanna thank Steve for his contribution. I'm sure it was face melting. Uh, so before I close you out, I want to show you one little variation of this I came up with on my own, where if I were ever in a situation where I had to play a solo at that tempo, I don't quite have the improvisational tools that Steve does, but we do what we can, so I came up with a couple of my own. So the, the lick is just this, three, four. You can make that into a six beat phrase. You can end it with that uh, inverted paradiddle, so. Uh, so you can incorporate some orchestration. You can do things like that. And I also want to show you one other little lick that I've been playing around since, playing around since, playing around with, and that is this. So, deployed over the 16th notes at this tempo, it would sound like this. Three, four. So, if you can imagine playing the phrase of the song. So, guys, I want to thank you once again for tuning in to this lesson. As usual, it's been a challenge. It forced me to level up to be equal to the challenge of the lesson, but that's what I enjoy. Quick sales pitch, as you know, those of you guys who want a sequential 
step through approach of basically everything it takes to get to be able to improvise better and play the drums better. The equivalent of studying with me for six to nine months for pennies on a dollar, I recommend you check out the 80-20 coaching course. And if you're ready to get your feet wet, but not quite ready to jump in all the way, I recommend the 80-20 roadmap. Most drummers suffer from some version of the same three mistakes. They're not playing clean, not playing in time, and poor upload speed or processor speed with your improvisation. Get the roadmap, triage your three major mistakes, and hopefully upgrade to the coaching course if you decide that's right for you. All right, killers, it's been another fun one. I'll see you again next week with another lesson of the week. Oh, finally, I'm looking for folks to shed with. So if you're in the New York area and you want to shed with me, hit me up. I am addicted to shedding. I want somebody who's just going to mop the floor with me, show me zero mercy. So that's what's up. All right. Thank you.